class. What were we discussing? What were we doing basically? <clears throat> Okay, anyone, where did we start? Summary will be good to begin with. I think uh, factors that affect Hardy Weinberg equilibrium, right? Okay, let me summarize from Hardy Weinberg principle then. Who will give a summary? Quick but detailed summary. <clears throat> Fatima, how about you? Will you give a summary? Am I audible to you, Fatima? Or else, Rifat. Refat, am I audible to you? Yes, Refat, will you be able to give a quick brief summary? Someone has to give a summary, right? Rifat, can you hear me? Is your microphone still not working? <clears throat> See, one issue is that, you know, I also have to um, grade you on the basis of your class performances. Those who are not speaking at all in any of the classes, they're going to be at loss because I don't know how good you are or how good you can be in class discussions, etc. So I have I have no template to mark you on that. So, okay. And I also don't know how much you're learning. So when it comes to doubt classes, also I will not be able to understand that where your doubt is coming from. Is it that is it because you did not understand in the class? Because all of you say yes. And I think yes is a very misused word in classrooms. So it does not make sense to say yes and then not able to be not being able to answer the next day but but please participate in the class so anyone who can speak and can give a summary without me taking names who will be courageous enough to come forward and give a summary see we, we cannot start before you people summarizing so we can either go like this for the next half an hour until someone gives a summary and then I start teaching. Yes, so whoever, sir, yes, Satif, thank you. <clears throat> Please, so we'll start from, uh, let's summarize from Hardy Weinberg because some part of it I'll be discussing today as well in human evolution, okay? Yes, sir. so the yeah. Hardy Weinberg principle states that the allele frequencies in a given population are stable and it mm -hmm. is constant from generation to generation. That is the gene pool, which is the total genes and their alleles in a population, it remains constant. So the Hardy Weinberg princ principle is the basic principle of genetic equilibrium. And mathematically, the sum total of all the allelic frequencies is one. Yes, but it has certain conditions. You know, in wild, there are many things that can affect this hardy Weinberg principle and that's the next time next thing okay then what are those factors <clears throat> yeah we learned about different factors that can affect and disturb the hardy Weinberg equilibrium the first one is gene flow or gene migration basically when the section of the population migrates to another population this is known as gene migration due to this new gene cell alleles can be added to the new population and 
they are lost from the sorry can be added to a new population they are lost from the old population so multiple occurrences of uh, gene migration that is basically gene migration in a large scale are known as gene flow yeah um, on a large scale or even like it's happening in a particular region but it's happening multiple times across the same species okay so that will also lead to the gene flow of that particular species okay yes, then we learned about uh, genetic drift which is the change in the gene or allele frequencies that can happen in a population suddenly like unexpectedly and by chance this is known as genetic drift then other basic examples include mutation uh, genetic recombination and uh, natural selection yes <clears throat> then we also learned about another factor called speciation which is uh, sometimes allele frequencies become very dif uh, different in the new population that they become their own species um so yeah speciation can be described as the emergence of new species from a pre-existing old species so this the original drifted population is called the founders so this effect is also known as founder effect then um yeah do from some experiments in microorganisms it, it was concluded that pre-existing advantageous mutations uh can be passed on to the next generation and they can result in new phenotypes which will lead to speciation okay. yes right so basically i i hope you all can appreciate now that speciation happens mostly when you are you are actually uh, disturbing the hardy winberg equilibrium to such an extent that a population that had genetic equilibrium now there are two subsets there are two groups from that population and within those two there is no genetic equilibrium right that's where that's why we are very different from other species correct so if two groups have no genetic equilibrium basically they are two different species is it clear so all the factors that you have studied that we have studied that can affect rd winberg equilibrium is also capable of creating new species yes or no over a long time <coughs> sorry yes. yeah okay then we went to the summary of plants evolution yes atif continue yes then we talked about the summary of evolution in plants we went through this graph about the evolution of plants and the how how, how much plants were there like the frequency of plants in different periods yes then we i think they, this is where we end right this is where we stopped i i gave you some dictations about plant or no yes sir so i think uh, in your in your notes you must have written till the photosynthetic earliest photosynthetic ancestors arise right yes sir chlorophyte ancestors like they they were able to uh, release oxygen in the atmosphere through the same similar mechanisms like of photosynthesis that happens today yes or no did we do yes, that sir. okay very well so let's let's take it take it up from there and thank you atif so i'll i'll continue from there so um so this was about about plant so once this chlorophyte ancestors came after that there was no stopping back right there was no looking back there was no stopping now multicellularity came and algae unicellular algae became multicellular plants and then they went on to form all these all this diversity of plant that we see today and there are so many different plants on the planet they are the most dominant species of li of life on the planet right yes sir. okay and plants are also very successful in evolution when we talk about evolution because see they have developed mechanisms or they have developed phenotypes which are very very different from animals to survive now animals are thought to be more dynamic because they can do several processes they can move so locomotion is the primary primary advantage that animals have over plants but even with that disadvantage plants have managed to do really well you know and in some regions even better than animals correct so now let's see um you all have ncrt with you 
let me um, so there is the similar kind of graph for animal evolution right can you come to that graph in your notebooks in your ncrts everyone let me also try to pull that out can someone tell me what page of ncrt it is one minute I think I found it. Okay, I found it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now write down summary of evolution. Let's start with the other thing. in animals and this graph as i have realized actually is about vertebrates development vertebrates evolution primarily so uh, let me insert this picture can you all see this picture everyone Now, is it, is it visible to all of you in one frame? I hope it is visible, right? Okay, very well. Yes, so now let, let's, let's start do, uh, with doing the same exercise in the class so the same thing that you did for plants all of you have to just write an account okay whatever you understand by this and you have to uh, tell me so i'm giving you species to begin with one is turtle lizards snakes you can leave two ataras but crocodiles basically just leave two ataras and write for the others two lines for each the similar kind of, you have to write similar kind of account, which of the following has the most primitive features, which has the most branching descent, which has the least branching descent, which came from what, et cetera. So basically you have to just summarize this like you did for plants. Is it clear everyone? Zaid, Atif, Fatima? Yes. Yeah, okay. So uh, same thing, let me, let me give you five minutes. So I'm giving you five minutes by clock and your time starts now, okay? Don't look at the book. NCRT anyways does not explain this graph. So even if you look at the NCRT, you will end up writing things which are not related to the graph, but apart from the graph. But many questions come which are from the graph and we often don't pay attention to this graph. So that's why we are doing this five minute exercise. So your time starts now everyone, okay? I'm here only, just ask me if you have any doubt. You all are writing? Very good.
I hope no one is finding any difficulty understanding and explaining this graph. People, anyone is finding it difficult? It's slightly differently represented than the plant one. And I hope you must have understood the difference by now. So two more minutes, okay? Two more minutes, two and a half. Done, everyone. <clears throat> People done. Said. Okay, still doing. Couple of more minutes. Will you will you finish in that time? Okay, take two three more minutes. Don't worry. <clears throat> Okay, everyone, time's up. Everyone is written?
a brief account from this graph. Fatima, you just joined in or what? Am I audible, people? See, please at least keep your microphones on, you know. Those who cannot, uh, those who do not have a functional microphone, please get it functional, right? Because I would love to teach students who can engage in discussions and speak. Staying mute fails the very purpose of my classes. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's begin with Zed. Zed, what have you written? What do you, how will you explain this graph? Where will you start? So I wrote some notes so uh, that uh, around like 500 uh, 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 MYA, uh, sorry, invertebrates uh, originate and were active. Uh, yes, this you noted from your NCRT because yeah. this graph has nowhere 500 MYA mentioned. In fact, the graph starts from 350 million years ago. So this, I, and I told you strictly to not copy NCRT because that's not the point. You have to explain this graph. Where is invertebrates in this graph? Where is 500? million years ago is there any anywhere in the graph uh, all no, right so what's the point of state starting explaining this graph uh, 500 years million years ago this is a simple it's a picture you have to see the picture when you go and see a painting you infer the painting right that this painting looks like a scenery so these are mountains and this looks like a house we just have to do the same in a scientific manner to this graph, Z. Uh, sure. Okay, someone else? Fatima? Or Hiba? See, if you people are not growing biologically to understand things, and you're just relying in that every class, I will come and spoon feed you with new concepts. I can do that, you know, that's what you are paying for. So technically you are entitled to get that from any institution or place where you are studying. But I'm just telling you that this is not just any regular space of getting education. I put in efforts so that you become independent thinkers in biology. And an independent thinker does not only go on to become a scientist, to be a doctor, to be anything if you are an independent thinker, you can analyze data, you can understand knowledge, it's going to benefit you, right? So that's one point. So please don't rely on spoon feeding a lot. We have done seven chapters. We are ending the seventh one. This is high time. I expect some things from you in biology now, right? Okay, Hiba, can you speak up? Rifat, can you speak up? Please do speak up, right? At least feel bad for me. Okay. So I think no one's gonna speak up. Now let me try with Atif. Atif, are you there? Will you speak up? Yes. Yes, okay, thank you so much. I think it's just you and me in the class. Yes, Rifat, please get it fixed soon because see, it's, it's highly demotivating for me to teach a screen, right? Yes, Atif, how will you explain, how will you go on explaining this graph? So teachers don't even spend time on these topics, you know? You go and see other curriculums and uh, at other places how they design, they, they're designed to give you information. I can also design. In fact, I teach in that mode when we are doing crash courses or things like that, where we just keep on dumping information on students and see this can come in entrance, this can come in entrance, go and memorize, go and memorize. Every day you will get a sheet with 50 new uh, terminologies and sentences 
you will go and memorize but that's called baking you for a competition it's like you are in a pressure cooker this is the time where you can actually learn we are not baking you we are ripening you and it's a slow and gradual process but you're not understanding the importance of it i can i can just say that over this, this is a graph in your ncrt just look at it let's move forward finish this in 2 minutes go on to the next chapter it takes efforts people so please value it and participate your participation is all i need nothing else yes atif how will you explain this graph how will you go on explaining this yes yes sir. so you can uh, see from this graph that uh, about uh, 350 million years ago yeah so uh, always start like on x axis this is what is this and what is on y axis of this graph whenever you have to explain any graph first explain the coordinates so on y axis is again the evolutionary time point right yes sir okay perfect and on x axis diversity in animals okay animal diversity specifically vertebrates diversity they are all vertebrates yes gone atif sorry yes so you can see it in the graph from about 350 million years ago uh, early reptiles appear and almost all uh, animals we know of now have evolved from early reptiles so yes in, uh, all the animals which are reptile onwards so if you pay attention none of these animals are amphibians or fish right there is no fish or amphibian in the example is there any yes, fish sir. or amphibian no but uh, isn't a fish or a amphibian vertebrate they have vertebral column right they have a backbone but they are not present here because the reason is this graph is starting from early reptiles and reptiles have evolved from amphibians and amphibians have evolved from fish so fish and amphibian is not there they have not explained this in this graph so this is the limitation of this graph that's why you can also only see reptiles which are turtles lizards snakes tuataras and crocodiles and then you see birds and mammals you don't see amphibians and fish in this graph okay yes atif is then we can see uh, after uh, 50 million years uh, the uh, the animals divided you know animals were separated into two species called uh, sauropsids and cynopsids so almost uh, all the animals except mammals were evolved from sauropsids and only mammals uh, have evolved from cynopsids perfect continue yes then from sauropsids uh, we can see that the one with the least evolution is the turtle it's not with the least evolution it's with the least branching descent and most conserved prehistoric characteristics right yes okay let's 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 so yes it's not like tur turtles do share primitive characteristics they are very so they, this hard shell to protect itself and all these things but you were very right that there there's two branches that go this way one goes to form cynapsids and the other one goes to form sauropsids and the word saur means lizards mostly the word cynap does not means lizard okay so sauropsids or sauropods all of them are reptiles or some or the other cousins of reptiles and even birds come in that category so now the interesting thing is we know that birds have evolved from reptiles because they come from the sauropsid branch that's why the dinosaur word the saur in dinosaur is means lizard so in sauropsids you will see that there were uh, thecodonts who got extinct so all these extinct which are now extinct are mentioned here and one of the thecodont branch formed dinosaurs okay and another formed crocodiles can you see this so yes. crocodiles are very close to dinosaurs that's why crocodiles are also known as living fossils they share many many similar features and then one branch that deviated from dinosaurs became birds okay aves 
and this branch how do we get so there is one evidence for this branching which is known as archaeopteryx archaeopteryx go and find out what is this this is a this is a fossil that was found that is a connecting link between birds and reptiles so it had features of both birds and reptiles now what are the features of reptiles reptiles have teeth in their mouth right but birds do not have uh, uh, lips or teeth they have beaks now archaeopteryx was shown shown to have found to have beak but inside the beak there were fine teeth also archaeopteryx had both scales <clears throat> and feathers at different different like uh, on the, on the body so feathers are a feature of birds and scales are a feature of reptiles so archaeopteryx tells us about this branching that happened and birds evolved from dinosaurs so technically if you think that chicken is actually a very close cousin of dinosaurs in evolution you know it's uh, funny but it's true right and then one branch of synapsids specifically just evolved into pelicosaurs so these pelicosaurs were like lizards but this was the last lizard and then therapsids came no more saurs now and therapsids became mammals so basically the root of mammalian evolution also goes back to early reptiles but from reptiles two things evolved birds and mammals okay birds are more closer because they are even more closer to the reptiles that are living today like crocodile so dinosaurs are extinct but if you go back then you come to this branch right and this branch is shared between crocodile dinosaur and then the birds dinosaurs are no more there so birds and crocodile become very close do you understand that now how we link animals in um according to the phylogeny in evolution is it clear yeah so lizards and turtles are very straightforward from sauropsids okay their evolution is straightforward snakes look at this branching so lizards snakes came from like species so lizards and snakes share common ancestor so basically snakes are reptiles and lizards are reptiles snakes are just legless lizards if you see technically they are lizards they are reptiles which do not have legs yes or no yes sir and then they have evolved a whole uh, new and different set of features morphology and anatomy and behavior over time okay so do you understand now that mammals get their separate branch right from the early reptiles which is the synapsids rest all other reptiles and birds have the branch sauropsids which kept on deviating okay so there are, if you see the one with the most branching is birds right now because one branching happened here then one here and then here right so from early reptiles came the thicodonts and from the thicodonts became crocodiles or dinosaurs and from dinosaurs came the birds and the least branching descent that we see in this graph is for turtle yes turtles and lizards yes or no yes. because they come from early reptiles so is this graph clear yes okay very well and this where this extinction stops so this part stops here they also were extinct so you can just figure out which period they extincted in so jurassic was the pinnacle of dinosaurs rule jurassic and towards as they moved towards cretaceous they started declining and then they became extinct there are many theories for extinction of dinosaurs none of which is able to give us one single complete answer so scientists believe that it, the that it uh, there the the truth could have been more than one so more than one theories combined can give us a better answers which are logical and can also be proved in 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 some or the other manner okay so that part is still under research 
But one thing that you must have heard about is that an asteroid came and collided, a big sized asteroid collided with Earth. And that led to extinction of dinosaurs, right? Yes, sir. So it was true that an, astro an asteroid collision happened during the same period. But what's not clear is that, was that the sole reason for all the extinction of the dinosaurs? Because there are many organisms that are still alive that lived before dinosaur, okay? And the theory is most of them were aquatic. So for example, crocodiles. Can you see crocodiles here? So when dinosaurs became extinct, this branch was also active, right? Can you see these two branches were together in time during the Cretaceous period? Yes or no? Yes. I'm marking one as one and two. So these two branches, this was for the crocodiles ancestors and this was for dinosaurs. So somehow they became extinct, but they survived. You understand? Snakes survived. Lizards survived. Turtles survived. Is it clear? Yes. So the clear answer is yet to emerge out of all that we know. Okay, so having understood that, uh, let's start writing down something about animal evolution. Write down. When the single-celled organisms became multicellular, when the single celled organisms became multicellular, the diversity of life, the, uh, sorry, the diversity of animals started, started growing. When single celled organisms became multicellular, the diversity of animals started growing rapidly. Okay. So first, the invertebrates evolved. Invertebrates means, what do we mean by invertebrates? Invertebrates, people. So first organisms they came up. Yes, organisms that? Organisms that uh, do not have vertebral column. Do not have a, yes, vertebral column. So invertebrates came up around 500 million years ago. Okay. And the first kind of vertebrates that started coming were fish, as I told you. So from here came the um, So like if you talk about plants and animals together, some seaweeds and some other aquatic plants also came up. But for animals, the jawless fish. Remember studying class 11th, biological classification of animals? There you studied uh, fish, gnathostomes on agnathostomes. Jawless and jawed fish. No remembrance? Okay, please go back and revise. So jawless, jawless fish came that uh, from there, around the same time, the fish with stout and fins. Stout means a mouth region, a jaw. They evolved, okay? It's happening around at the same time, 350 to 340 million years ago. Now, slowly life started coming out of water. Now to come out of water, fish needed some changes. Some species of fish can, could hold the breath. To begin with, you cannot just develop lungs due to a mutation all of a sudden. So fish developed lungs and started coming out of the water. It must have started with gills only, but something that enabled them 
to either hold their breath out of water for longer times to go and look for uh, food you know when they cannot find food in the water for some moments or you know there is something called lungfish have you heard of this lungfish no okay go and look at it what it is lungfish it can crawl out of muddy water when the water becomes scarce so to survive animals have to adapt so at many places when water started drying up so these fish could actually move out of and they are still <clears throat> present some of these species uh, still are there okay so they are not exactly just pure fish species they behave like amphibians okay so lungfish can come out of water and can roam around it 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 cannot just come out on the dry land like it cannot come out on a desert let's say. but from a lake into a puddle or 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 into a marshy area it can just move out of the water in mud and can look for survival so through lungfish came the amphibians okay so what are amphibians what are amphibians so those can live in water as well as on the land that hippopotamus can also do so is hippopotamus is, is an amphibian uh, they can breathe in the water and as well as the land can they breathe in water uh. can amphibians breathe in water no they can breathe they can breathe through moist soil uh, um, moist skin so if they are around water they can still breathe through the moist skin but they need less water than fish to survive but how will you define it then organisms whose life cycle is dependent both on water and on land so to breed they have to go back to water amphibians lay eggs which are very fragile if you have seen the eggs of a of a frog anyone has seen eggs of a frog they are jelly like if if they lay those eggs on ground those eggs will just desiccate and die it will get dried up so these eggs have to be laid in the water just like fish eggs okay so part of their life cycle their life cycle starts from water tadpoles frogs are amphibians right but their larval stage which is called tadpoles can only survive if it is in water if it is outside the water will it be able to survive no yes. even about turtle so turtle no turtle swim like there is a difference between there are two things turtle and tortoise do you know, know the difference between a turtle and a tortoise yes yeah what is the difference so turtle are having a fin like structure uh, uh, mm -hmm. can you say uh, tortoise i the tortoise are having uh, legs can yes so turtles have flippers yes. they swim with those flippers so they can also walk on sand using the flipper so both tortoise and turtle lay eggs outside the water because they are reptiles they are not amphibians both turtle and tortoise are reptiles amphibians lay their eggs in the water or in the moisture or around the water turtles even though they are they can live in the water so many reptiles so amphibians started coming out they could live both reptiles are capable of living on land entirely but then many of them went back and adapted themselves to water like turtle tortoise is more terrestrial than turtle turtle is more aquatic just remember that but both of them lay their eggs out mostly and then when these small small turtle and tortoise hatch they move towards water okay they swim in the water they feed they eat in the water they are not they, they are not evolved to find food on land but they lay eggs on the land just opposite okay zed 
Yes. So write down. The first amphibians that the first amphibians whose life cycle the first amphibians whose life cycle depended depended both on water and land evolved from evolved from lobe fins lobe fins lobe fins are like fish kind like i'm talking about lung fish right lobe fins go and also figure out what are lobe fins so the first kind of amphibians evolved from lobe fins next point then the amphibians evolved into reptiles the amphibians evolved into reptiles who are capable of who are capable of existing capable of existence outside water okay and because reptiles were the first kind of organisms to come first kind of animals to be able to survive exclusively on land without relying on water for their life cycle so they just you know took over the land they became the most dominant kind of life kind of animal forms on land and at one point of time the earth was ruled by reptiles when including dinosaurs so dinosaurs are nothing but reptiles right it was called reptilian world and not the mammalian world so now if you see the world is ruled by the wild the nature is ruled by who are the who are the predators apex predators in every ecosystem mm -hmm. mammals right if you see in the jungle it's a lion or a tiger okay and humans you know so you see that it, um, it, it's it's ruled by mammals now reptiles are still there but they are not at the top are the most dominant ones in the ecosystem so write down reptiles reptiles dominated the earth reptiles dominated the earth for around 200 million years so when they originated from there for around 200 million years they dominated the earth next point some of the land reptiles went back to water habitats some of the land reptiles went back to water habitats now how do we know that how do we believe that what i am saying is actually not just a story but actually is true we were not there to see that the other possibility is that the, the that these reptiles never came out of water right how do we know that they came out of the water as amphibians evolved as reptiles on the land then they went back into the water and all this is happening in millions of years it is not happening like in 
2002 they came out of water 2003 they went back in water no it's millions of years generation after generation but how do we know that and can you give the answer how do we know everything that we put as a story now how do we know that at one point of time the the earth was ruled by dinosaurs were we there to see it sir with the combination of fossils and uh, carbon dating we can like track the relations between these animals and then find out yes fossil records if in one geographical if in if in one geological period we find fossils of a particular animal and those are these fossils are the most uh, ferocious like the most ferocious carnivores belongs to reptiles and in the same period if we find mammals and other organisms as tiny and less in number what does this mean that they were not ruling right to rule you have to be big ferocious mighty powerful and all of this were reptiles at one point of time called dinosaurs so write down and we how do we know that they went back for example again fossil records looking at ancestors so the reptiles which are found in water now like turtle do we have their land cousins or land ancestors do we also find some fossils which resembles turtle but we find it not from oceans or areas which were dry or land land uh, areas which were terrestrial so all these it's a complex study but it has proofs okay so this was about water reptiles and one of the example of a reptile that went back from fossil records right down and uh, evolved into fish like reptiles is ichthyosaurs ichthyo saurs you can go and look up at the structure so ich ichthyosaurs are reptiles whose ancestors used to live on land and then they adapted over time for water again as reptiles the same thing even mammals do today whale is a classic example right we know that whale is a mammal right yes and ma and mammals evolved from synapsids right synapsids therapsids and then mammals so they were not aquatic but whale being a mammal is aquatic so it clearly tells us that whales must have the ancestor you know uh, whales are what are the closer closest ancestors to whales what are the closest ancestors to whales blue whale what is the closest ancestor to a blue whale any idea even if you don't know the name tell me what do you think it it is an aquatic one or a terrestrial one terrestrial sorry I think just logically, who do you think can be uh, closest? Which mammal do you think is not totally land one and also not totally aquatic, looking like a fish, but has adapted a lot for water? I just took the name. Not amphibians. That we are mammals. We are talking about mammals now. You cannot relate mammals to amphibians. You have to relate mammals among mammals. Human is a mammal. Okay. Let's let's say zebra is a mammal, but zebra lives entirely on land, right? Then whale is a mammal that lives entirely in water. Cannot take out a whale out, and it cannot survive. It has adapted, which this does not makes whale an amphibian or a fish. it's still a mammal but which other mammal do you say think logically if you think can you say that it must be the closest relative of whales dolphin hippopotamus you see hippopotamus does it look anything like a whale no no but they are the closest cousins of whales in evolution and how do we know that 
again it's not just a story that i am telling you and someone told me how do we know that how do we know someone is closest to someone how do we know that x is y's father how do we know that this is the culprit who murdered someone I cannot give more hints than this. DNA fingerprinting. I just taught you that in the last chapter. Remember? So we look at the genome and we see for similarities. So we share more than 99.98% of our DNA with chimpanzees. That's why they are the closest cousin of ours in evolution. Do you understand everyone? Yes. We do not share that much similarity with a whale, but whales do share the genetic similarity with hippopotamus. And it's interesting because that explains, oh yes, that explains how mammals became adapted to aquatic environments because hippopotamus is still at the borderline. It spends most of its time in water, underwater, but to, to mate and to eat, it might come out of the water and the puddle, right? Often or to raise the babies, they do so. Is it clear? Yes. Okay, write down the next thing. Uh, the land reptiles. So we wrote about the aquatic reptiles. Uh, sorry, the reptiles which went back and became aquatic. Now write down the land reptiles in brackets, of course, the dinosaurs, they were the land reptiles. The land reptiles in bracket dinosaurs were huge, were huge and dominated the ecosystem for very long. Were huge and dominated the ecosystem for very long. But about 65 million years ago, but about, so dinosaurs, but about 65, about 65 million years ago, they became extinct. And how do we know that? Again, is it not? Proof, can you tell me? How can we find a proof that they all got extinct suddenly 65 million years ago? Fossils. Yeah, so if you are finding fossils constantly of dinosaurs from everywhere around the world, you are dating them, it's like 68, 69, 64, no sorry, 65. And then it suddenly stopped. You do not find fossils which are 50, 20 million years ago. What does this mean? That they were alive and all of a sudden something happened 65 million years ago that after that we are not finding dinosaurs fossil which can date back to that era. So there were no more dinosaurs. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. So what happened? They became extinct and why they became extinct? What killed them? So the most uh, apt theory which uh, explains everything is a combination of climate change, climate change and asteroid collision combined together. So this theory says that due to asteroid collision, many of the dinosaurs directly were impacted and were killed. But that was not enough to kill all and wipe out the species of all dinosaurs from the face of the earth. But what happened afterwards, that collision, this is just to explain you, okay, so that you understand. You don't have to write it in entrance. So what happened afterwards, whenever such a big collision happens, there is lots and lots of dirt. And uh, first, there's heat. It almost, you know, makes that region like an active volcano oozing out magma from the, from the mantle. 
And after that, when it cools down, there is so much of dust in the atmosphere that it will not allow the sunlight to come on the surface, not just for days, for months and years. And what will happen? If you have a shadowed sky for years, what, can, what will happen to reptiles? What are reptiles? They are cold-blooded organism. They rely on sun for their blood warming, right? For maintaining their body temperature. So if they do not get to do that actively, then they will over time become weak and will perish. So it was... It was like a very rapid impact to wipe out, let's say around 50, 60% of the population and then a slow change that wiped out the rest 30, 40%. Is it clear everyone? This is what we currently so. believe in, but more proofs and more studies are being done to pinpoint if that's the only thing or there could be some other factor also playing a part. Could it be some kind of an infection that spread because of um, um, something that arise when dinosaurs fell. So that is also one thing that scientists are, evolutionary biologists are looking forward to understand. Okay, now write down. Even though dinosaurs became extinct, even though dinosaurs became extinct, many small sized reptiles of that era Many small. Now, small means compared to dinosaurs. Small does not mean one centimeter small. Not with respect to human, with respect to the dinosaurs. So many small size reptiles of that era still exist today. Still exist today. Okay. For example, have you heard of this one term called Komodo dragon? Yes. Komodo. Yes. What is Komodo dragon? It's a big reptile. It's a lizard. Right? Yes. Yes. Alligators. There are many alligators which are very, very primitive. And also very vulnerable endangered species. So they survived. Now let's come to, from reptiles, let's come to, um, okay, um, write down about birds that birds evolved from reptiles. Yes, Heba, which point do you want me to repeat? Many small size reptiles, I think this one, right? Many small sized reptiles from the era of dinosaurs still exist today. Still exist today. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Am I audible now? Better. I think this one will be issue. Am I audible, everyone? Yes. Okay, cool. So write down the next point. Uh, another evolutionary theory suggests that many terrestrial reptiles or many terrestrial dinosaurs or land dinosaurs, many terrestrial dinosaurs evolved into birds. Evolved. The point. Uh, many terrestrial dinosaurs evolved into birds. Another evolutionary theory suggests that many terrestrial dinosaurs evolved into birds. You can write down uh, for example, Archaeopteryx provides a proof for this. Archaeopteryx provides 
a proof for this. Okay, so here comes the birds. You all are making this also, right? And then from reptiles only, another branch, uh, let me put it here, came the mammals, the synapsids. Understand? Yes, sir. So all this branch is happening, birds, dinosaurs, turtles, lizards, snakes, crocodiles, that is sauropsids branch. And this is the synapsid branch. So right down the first mammals, the first mammals that evolved from the synapsid branch, the first mammals that evolved from the synapsid branch were very small like shrews you know shrews and these were like with the and then the same time when dinosaurs were there around the same time shrews are small small rat like organisms have you seen shrews a thin little pointy nose it's very small. So early mammals were very small. There were no tigers, cheetahs, or you know, ferocious mammals were not there. Jackals, hyenas, they were not there. And how do we know this? From again, the fossils. We do not see any big predatory mammal in that time when the earth was dominated by reptiles like dinosaurs. And of course, if anything is dominating, you will not allow other species to come up and evolve and dominate. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. And write down mammals. Mammals were viviparous. Viviparous means? What do we mean by viviparous? They give birth to the young ones, do not lay eggs until, so till now, everything that evolved, fish, amphibians, reptiles, and birds lay eggs, right? Yes. Every one of them lay eggs. Mammals were the first thing that started giving birth to the babies. Okay. And the second thing that mammals were good at but they, they had bigger brains as compared to reptiles for their body size ratio. Brain to body ratio is always uh, compared. Okay. And if you see T-Rex, they were very, very big dinosaurs. You know, they could be as big as 20 feet tall. So big dinosaurs and uh, even more than 20 feet, 25, 30 feet, they could go up to. But if you see their brain size with respect to their body size, it was very, very small. So even though the early mammals were very small, their brain size with respect to their body ratio was big. Do I make sense? And that is what matters in biology. So bigger brains with respect to your body means you tend to be more intelligent, right? Intelligent in what? Solving mathematics? Were shrews solving mathematics, learning science? What, the, what were they doing with their intelligence? What does an intelligent and intelligent organism do? It survives. It does not get killed easily. It can survive in nature. It can avoid danger and find solutions, go and hide can behave more intelligently to um, ensure its survival. Yes or no? Yes. So mammals right down were more intelligent and were able to survive better. More intelligent 
enabled to survive better. So when reptiles came down, mammals took the earth, took over the earth. When reptiles came down, mammals took over the earth. Okay, due to lack of competition, due to lack of competition. Is that clear everyone? Yes. And then um, for mammals also, write down, many mammals, many, so mammals were terrestrial but many mammals went back to water to aquatic habitat or water habitat and adapted to survive better it's the same thing happening it happens for reptiles also right it happened for birds also, for that matter. You know about a bird that is good with surviving in water? A bird that lives in water and then comes out to lay eggs and then again goes and live in water. Live in or around water, hunts in water. People. There's a famous bird that doesn't look like a bird, but it's a bird. It resembles more like a dolphin. What do we call it? Yes, penguin. So penguins are birds, write down. Penguins are birds that have adapted to live in aquatic habitats. So it happened for reptiles. So it, it, it actually, it means that life came out of water, but kept going in water from all the classes, reptiles, birds, and even mammals. So which one, which are the examples from mammals that adapted to water? Whales, dolphins, seals. These are, these are all examples. Whales, dolphins, and seals. there's one more thing it's called a uh, water cow you know what is a cow what is a water cow no it's called sea cow also so they are cows of the sea what do cows do they are herbivores they graze the grass right cattle of the land they are cattle of the water so they have big suction mouths and they're herbivores. They just go and eat tiny, tiny plants and algae from the uh, sea floor. So they're called sea cows. They behave, they are, uh, they are vegetarian like cows and they're called sea cattles. So all these have just adapted to survive better in water. And with this, we finish both for plants and animals. And one last thing, which is a specialized thing in evolution, specific thing, which is left is human evolution. Okay. So this I will finish in the next class and the chapter will be done. It will take half an hour to finish human evolution. And then we are done with this chapter and we'll start with the next chapter. So I think, uh, what is the next chapter? Chapter eight, can anyone tell me? What is chapter eight? Is it coming? Is it in everyone's syllabus? I think with evolution, the second unit stops, uh, ends, right? But I think chapter it's uh, human health and disease. Human health and disease. And what is chapter 9 and 10?
chapter 9 and 10. Chapter so 9 much. is food production, enhancement and food production. Okay, and 10 is? So chapter 9 is deleted. Chapter 9 is deleted? Yes. Okay, but and what is chapter 10? Microbes and human welfare. Welfare, okay. So it's deleted from the boards, but not from the entrance, right? Okay, so we'll, we'll go with chapter eight first, human health and diseases, because that's there in your boards and entrance both. And then we'll go to chapter 10 and then come back to nine. Okay, this is how we'll follow. So I'll start human health and disease in the next class after finishing human evolution. Okay, everyone. So there we can connect also our evolution and then the microbes that cause disease or different kind of diseases. Okay, so I'll see you in the next class, everyone. Do you have anyone has any, any doubts to to ask everyone has noted everything